Could this month be the last time we get an Inside Infinite Development update from 343? As well as Joseph Stane tweets out some hints about what's coming around the corner and a 343 dev gets completely taken out of context, but the gaming news media runs with it anyway. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all that and some more. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So we got a bunch of little tidbits of Halo Infinite news for you guys today. Each little topic doesn't really necessarily warrant its own video, but all these together create something pretty awesome that I think you guys will like to enjoy. So it's kind of an all one-stop shop for your recent Halo news. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as I ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So I'm sure all you Halo fans have been aware we've been receiving monthly updates about Halo Infinite since December of 2020. Each one of those having their own themes, like December we had just kind of a nice little reveal, January had the sandbox, we had a PC update, we had an environment update as well. But what's going to be this month's update? We actually didn't really know until just yesterday, honestly. On Twitter, Unishack, the community manager, clarified exactly what we'll be seeing for this month's Halo Infinite Inside update. The Unishack replied to a question of, will the be an Inside Infinite this month. And Unishack replies back saying, yep, it will focus on the Waypoint team and how they are supporting Halo Infinite. The game team is prepping for larger beats than blogs. So we're mixing it up and holding on Ask 343s for the time being. We've got some good PC cues and we'll circle back when it works best for the team. And so just to clarify, if there's any kind of questions asking, so no Ask 343 this week or next week, he says, correct, the team is focusing on summer sweetness, which for me is a bit of a bummer. I thought I had a pretty good question about if there's gonna be some ray tracing or DLSS support when it comes to Halo Infinite, because it's gonna be a rather demanding game, not like super demanding, I don't expect it to be, but having those PC features within the game certainly do help the experience of making the visuals a lot better. So what are these larger beats and summer sweetness? Well, obviously next month, literally from like a month from today, we have E3 coming around for us, and that's gonna be the big reveal for Halo Infinite. All eyes are gonna be on this game. So 343 really needs to come out of the gate swinging, showcasing why the delay was necessary and what they improved on to make sure that like, hey, it was worth this extra year of development, guys, could trust us. And you better believe we'll have all the information you'll ever need for E3 on this channel. I normally do a live stream of E3 as well, so you guys can jump in and jump in on the fun as well. Link in the description down below to my Twitch channel. We will be doing a live stream reaction to E3 this year. So please go give it a follow. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday as well. Now I'm actually very interested on the Waypoint team and how their integration is going to be with Halo Infinite. We did know in the last development update that they did mention that there is going to be a, a Waypoint app going along with Halo Infinite, which you might think, okay, cool. It's a phone app. It's just Waypoint. I barely use it. This time I think it's gonna be very different. I have a very strong feeling that Waypoint's gonna be a pretty awesome app you're gonna wanna have on your phone. And it's gonna be a total game changer of the how you're experiencing Halo Infinite. Imagine all the stuff you did on Halo Waypoint, but on your phone. And also maybe possibly of like adding in LFGs. If you guys have ever messed with Destiny 2's phone application, it does a great job helping you find player like-minded players to play with you know, changing out some content within the game as well. So I have a very strong feeling they'll probably have a lot of customization focus with it. Where maybe you might be able to trade out your weapon skins or your camo skins and stuff like that. Trade out armor pieces on the fly if you'd like, so you don't have to go back to the menu and stuff like that. Maybe be able to download game modes and maps just on the fly from your phone right to your account, kind of like how we could with Halo Waypoint with Halo 5, but do it on your phone. So instead of having to like log into your computer and then find the game mode, searching, be like, okay, talking to your friends, like, what's the game? mode called again just open your phone app download it right there you probably could play it right away that sounds pretty freaking awesome that's my expectations at least but i'm sure we'll know a lot more once e3 rolls around so waypoint team update might sound a little boring but honestly it could have huge implications on how your general experience of halo infinite is outside of the game this next bit we have a bit of a tease from joseph stating himself when i originally thought this was going to be a part of the ask 343 that was probably going to come out on thursday of this week week 
but it looks like it's not because they're waiting on you know putting a lot more effort into e3 but joseph stain recent tweet recently tweeted this out so with this tweet joseph stain says summary of my week and it shows sequence v th 7 through 11 right here if you guys don't know what this image is this is essentially is a screenshot of like your different tracks that you have within adobe premiere which is a video editing program but my assumption when joseph stain tweets out something like this this is probably something to do with uh e3 and what we're going to be seeing since e3 this year is all going to be done from home it's going to be live streamed and it's going to be free for everyone to check out so it's going to be a totally new experience so most likely they'll have some pre-rendered kind of cut scenes and gameplay we get the chance to check out Clobril, a known Microsoft insider who's had some very credible leaks, even replied about this as well. Confirming my assumptions that this is a Halo Infinite trailer slash footage in the making right here. So they have some gameplay or at least something they're going to show about Halo Infinite for E3. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys, to keep yourself up to date. Now, this last bit of news I'm a little late on because I've been very busy with uh, actually just making an offer in on a house again and accept this. So doing that whole process as well as Mother's Day weekend. So I was pretty busy. So but we finally get a chance to talk about this news and that's the recent like bad news that's been kind of going around the internet about Halo Infinite talking about crunch and, and how this 343 dev says it might be overly ambitious and how there's cut content and things like that but when I actually read through this I'm like yeah that's kind of like every game every game out there is super ambitious it might be a little too much for, for itself to handle every piece of media ever has deleted content or cut content Halo 2 a lot of people love that game cut content People love Halo 3, a lot of cut content from that game as well. You know, ever watched a deleted scene from a movie? That's cut content. And a lot of the news media ran with this guy's interpretation of the video that he watched, rather than actually watching the video themselves to actually get some proper context. So this 343 dev actually went out and made a YouTube video talking about some more context and clarification to all the news going around this, because he said like, this is actually really worrying me about how this could affect my job and also how he's been like, losing sleep, having panic attacks and stuff like that because he was completely taken out of context because it was some guy's interpretation of what he said is what people reported on rather than actually watching the entire video for some actual context. Essentially, he was saying that the crunch is there, yes, but it's because people are super passionate and want to work more. They're not being forced to work more to crunch in extra deadlines. He said, yeah, people do work extra hours, but that's because they're passionate people and they want to really get what they want done in the game, not because 343 is demanding them to work more than they should. Talked about how the game could be overly ambitious, and that's very true. I feel like Halo has been trying to be overly ambitious since Halo 4, or really every Halo game has always been overly ambitious. And generally, every game out there in the, the gaming universe is overly ambitious, and they end up having to probably cut some content to make it so it can work properly. And they also, he also mentions here about saying that how to not expect a masterpiece game when it comes to Halo Infinite. And that's really just because, you know, he said that, you know, they don't want to have people's expectations so high that whatever game gets released, it won't meet people's expectations. That's my, actually my big fear about Halo Infinite as well, as a lot of people have been very anxious about waiting for a Halo game. When Halo Infinite releases this year, it'll be six years between games. That's a huge amount of time between Halo games. And honestly, when I read through this the first time, I was like, yeah, this is kind of like your standard stuff within the gaming industry. Every game deals with this stuff. But he was talking about how he was very happy with his time with 343. He said he even almost cried when he left the studio because he, he worked there for eight years and enjoyed the people on the work that he had. He just felt like it was time for him to move on to do other projects. He even reached out to gaming news sources as well, like YouTubers and uh, other news networks out there for gaming information. And was like, I can provide context if you want to hear it because you kind of took me completely out of context. Nobody reached back to him. So do you think the gaming news media wants 343 to succeed or do they even care about being accurate? I always link my sources down below because I want to try to be as accurate as possible on this channel. So are the gaming news media really doing this because they want to provide information to viewers or do they just want the clicks? It sounds like it's kind of like they want more of the clicks than the actual credibility of being like, you know, a reasonable journalist. This also kind of feeds into like the human nature of just like news in general. People feed off of drama when it comes to news. If Halo Infinite was supposed to be working as it is and everything's going smoothly and fine, 
no one would really be talking about it as much as they are because Halo Infinite has had some ups and downs with its development, like every game does. But drama sells a lot more than successes in a way. Like, hey, look, everything looks great with Halo Infinite. It's a game you wanted. Everyone's gonna be like, great. It's supposed to be awesome. That's what they keep telling us. But what if it wasn't awesome? Oh my gosh, but the game's supposed to be awesome. That's what they told me. I have to know why it's not gonna be great. You can kind of see what I'm talking about with like why negativity really sells and drama really sells when it comes to getting clicks online. So if you want some actual Halo news information, I mean, you can subscribe to this channel or just make sure that whatever you're reading or looking into, just don't take it at face value. Actually think about it. If you feel like it's too good to be true, most likely it is, and try to cross-reference with other credible sources. So if you guys like these news and informational videos and been out of the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.